How to become a landlord. It is not as easy as buying a house, chucking a tenant in, and watching the passive income roll in. It is a little bit more complicated than that, as you probably expect. And we're gonna cover everything in this video, A to Z, how do you build a property empire? Let's get into it. Okay, so here we are then, we're chatting about the most basic of basic questions. How to become a landlord. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, 101 in many ways, but Pretty it's much. a question that we get asked a lot. We have a it, lot of first-time property investors. Yeah, and I guess it's also the question that lots of people ask before they get, it's the, the one question they ask before they get in touch. And funnily yeah. enough, there's a lot of people that invest in property or have just sort of inherited something, become a landlord. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of information that will help someone like that as well. Yeah, yeah. So Adam, you've got some talking points. I um, have. Well, yeah, like, first point then is, why become a landlord in the first place? That's the basic question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that's loads of good reasons. There's a few main there's ones. There's a few main ones, yeah. but um, I think in a world where uh, pensions might have let you down, mm -hmm. you know, or you might not trust them, that they're that they've changed, the goalposts have shifted, or you don't know what that annuity is going to be when you get there in 10 years' time or whatever. And you're going to get taxed on it then. Yeah, it? tax rates yeah. change, and you know, yeah. you've not got any certainty there, maybe. Um, savings have been raided over the last you know, 10 yeah. years. For lots of people, I don't even say most people, property, if you get it right, and we'll come on to mm -hmm. the difference between doing it right and wrong. If you get it wrong, well, it just doesn't work. Sure. But if you get it right, for most people... But you can quite often get it wrong and it still works. That's if you went, if you went absolutely for the long term yeah. and, you, and you were lucky. I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll come up about kind of doing it right and wrong. When Adam talks about doing it wrong and still working, if you got the wrong tenant and they started suing no, you... No, I just meant environmental you overpaid for something. Yeah. And, and it grew up in value for yeah, five years or yeah. ten years. Yeah, that eventually that it will work. So yeah. what we're alluding to there is, for most people, <clears> if you buy a house that... Um, in the right area, the right house, the right area, you rent it out, it will go up in value. It's the capital value. Mm -hmm. That's the main reason. It will go up better than most things have. By the time you throw in some leverage, that will mean your gain's better. Now, when I'm saying if you do it wrong, I, mean, you, I, I know a chap who bought a bungalow next door to a quite a nice house that I used to live in um, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. God, the time goes. And uh, he never rented it out. Yeah, he's kept it. And he kept it, but it went up sure. in value. And it was just, just well, that. Now, hence, if you have rented it out to the wrong tenant, that would have been why we use the phrase safest houses. Right? Safest houses. So, so I think the main thing is it's... So I would say become investment. a landlord because... Um, it's a safe and steady investment if you get it right, and you can leverage it. So you, you can either buy a house in cash, maybe add some value at the start by doing some work to it, yeah. and then if you want, put a mortgage on it and get some of your money back out to buy more. Or, yeah. you know, you, there's no other investment where the bank will lend you money from the start to go and buy it. I mean, there's it's pretty no, obvious basic no. stuff, but you can buy a house with a mortgage. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, if you didn't want to own it with a mortgage at the end, there's still yeah. some good reasons to buy it with a mortgage now, maybe buy five. In the future, sell two and pay for the other yeah. three in cash. There's all sorts of things you can do when it when you get comfortable mm -hmm. with leverage. So yeah. yeah, good reasons to become a landlord. Definitely. Now, how to become a landlord? Yeah. So you That's need, nice. first of all, again, it all sounds really obvious, but you need the right house. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be in the right location. You need to have made sure that you've paid the right amount for it. Yep. You've not overpaid, um, because unless you've got the right house, you'll never get the right tenant. Yeah. But most importantly, once you've found that right house, you need to make sure it's in the right condition. It's right, right, right. Yep. Right house, right condition, leads you to the right tenant. It sounds really simple. Yeah. Right house, right Find location, the house. right condition. Finding to get the house the right is tenant. harder than renovating the house. The I right think. one, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, there's, more move, there's more things that can go wrong with the renovation, there's yeah. more moving parts. But if you've, got the, if you've got a build team in place and you trust, a renovation can be managed yep. um, the, the, quite easily. The issue that lots of landlords have is they buy the wrong house. Hmm. And it doesn't work. If you buy the wrong house, or you even buy the house that we consider as the right house, but you pay too much for it, the ratios and the, the mechanics yeah, of it, the financial buy, plumbing of it, yeah, you just doesn't work. You might have bought something leasehold, or, and then it's got ground rents that double or triple, and that's yep. the wrong house or yep. the wrong property. So for us, the <clears> right house, and um, if, if you're watching a video on how to become a landlord, we're assuming you're probably not a landlord already, or maybe you've got one. Um, for me, for us, 
The right house is something vanilla, boring, simple. If you want excitement, go skydiving. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a two or three bedroom vanilla box that you can move the average tenant into for an affordable rent and they stay there for the long term. So is it a Victorian terrace or a 1980s you know, Wimpy Homes box or whatever? It, it could be any of those things, but roughly an eight to 10% yield. So yeah, you, yeah. you know what the average rent in the area is gonna be. It probably means you're buying a little bit smaller, a little bit cheaper house with not that much that can go wrong. You know, yeah. if, if the roof looks okay, the electrics have got a certificate, the boiler's reasonably new and has got a, a gas safe, you know, you, 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 you've got... If you're just starting out, you want to buy something where the majority of the country live in a property yeah. like that. Yeah. And now, <coughs> if, if, if you then want to go on to develop in a pub at the base of a windmill into a 17-bed HMO with an Airbnb in it, do that later. <laughs> Don't yeah. do it as your number one. So how to become a landlord, right house, right area. Have a look around our website on the rest of it for you know case studies on mm -hmm. what um, the, the kind of vanilla boxes we buy. If you're struggling, and go for that. To find the right house, I have a team of property sources I can help you. Later, um, plug. yeah, there you go. So um, there you go. You've got right house, right area. You pay the right price. They're all really important. Mm -hmm. If you're unsure at any one of those, back out and get some more knowledge. Yeah. What's next? What's next? So yeah, you've you've got the house. It's in the right condition that affords you the right tenant. So you've got to find that tenant. So, Explain that because I think um, that's important. So we, we we say this a lot. So it affords you the right yeah. tenant. If you if you um, have a house that's in the highest lettable condition, um, you provide a nice home, people mm. will look after it. Yeah. The, the horror stories that you hear tend to be, you, you dig a little deeper, read a little further. You know, mm. The landlord didn't do any maintenance for two years, yeah. kept putting the rent up, or yeah. you know, was yeah, a bad the, landlord the, the, in the first some, place. Some grit grit yeah. in the in the oyster. Yeah. 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 So um, decent and safe home. Now you wouldn't. These are these places are they're not palaces. They're not gold plated mm. taps and you know marble worktops. But when you look at the rest of the rental stock available in the area, they're yeah. usually in the well, they're always in the the twentieth quartile, the top twenty percent sure. of quality. Um, there's another thing that's not been talked about yet. So it's not just that's going to attract the right tenant, but having something that's substandard is going to cause you hassle. Mm. You're going to get damp, mold leaks, maintenance problems, environmental health officers, councils knocking on your door. So you've got to keep in um, good rentable condition in order to avoid those things. And you don't want those things the landlord because not only are they the kind of things that keep you up at night, but they cost money, real yeah, money. And totally. that makes it not work. So that kind of leads us into the next bit is um, understanding your responsibilities. So mm. um, yeah, doing the house up and making it all nice, you know, that's when you're part mm -hmm. of it. By doing that, you should have sort of met your first responsibility before a tenant's even moved in, is, is the house compliant? Yeah. You know, because that's the big thing really these days, um, compliance, make sure the house is compliant. You've got the obvious stuff like your gas certificate, your electrical certificate, your EPC, etc. But you know, there's no trip hazards in the back garden. Mm -hmm. um, there's, no there's no windows or doors that don't have safety glass in. Mm -hmm. All these little things, um, from a lettings point of view, you have a lot of responsibility as a landlord now. 180 odd, I think it is. Pieces keeps keeps of going up. All the different bits of legislation. Challenge, challenge, challenge me if I'm wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's still 183, yeah. it's 184 now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know, there's a lot, um, yeah. which is probably why, um, if you're not a professional landlord, you've not got some formal qualification or experience, you should be using a letting agent to make sure you yeah. don't Come on fall to foul of well. any of those issues. But yeah. I think understand your responsibilities as a landlord, especially if you're going to be getting a mortgage or you have one, the house has to be in a, of a certain standard and be maintained at a certain standard to, you know. It's yeah. only fair. So yeah. the, the, the rules, um, you know, renting the thing out versus you living there yourself, totally different. There's mm. no rule to stop you living in a dilapidated no, house. No, of course. That, but there is, if you're going to make a business out of selling that house by the month to a tenant, it's mm. better be right, it's gotta be right. You've got obligations to keep it in a, um, a decent and safe standard. If it falls shy of that, you've gotta put it right. And sometimes I hear, we hear, landlords sort of railing against that. Why, what, it didn't used to be like that in my day, or, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a lot of things didn't used to be like that. I'm perfectly there. fine living in a house with single glazing, why aren't they? Yeah, just, yeah. Just, 
you, you, you can't, you can't, um, you just can't think like that. It just will not work. You'll be constantly butting your heads with, Definitely. you know, tenants, councils, whatever. Um, yeah, keep it in the in the right condition. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just touch on a bit of then self managing a, a, a property versus using an agent. Yeah. And well, we're going we're, to say we're, this. We're, we're a letting agent, agent, so we're going to say use a letting agent. Use a letting agent. Yeah. But I, I, I've always used a letting agent. Yeah. So I, I, I never say anything that's... Yeah, um, that's it. I've never used yeah, one. I've never used one. So. You, you used one before you owned a letting agency yeah. because they could do a better job. Didn't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. And, and I, I didn't want to do it. Um, yeah. I, I didn't want the hassle. There was a short period of time. Of course, when we started our own letting agency, you could, well, you could still say I still self-manage. But you know I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know I don't. Yeah. Uh, and there's a team. But when we were a small team, the very first people that came in... Um, were massively more experienced than me. And actually, mm. they weren't experienced, generally speaking, in the lettings business. And they showed me a thing or two. Sure. Um, and I thought I knew what I was doing, and I just didn't. So they, they make things run smoother. They bring more money in. They let less stuff leak Tenants the typically cracks. prefer to have an agent because they feel that they've got mm -hmm. um, people they can contact. You know, self-managing landlord typically might not well, they might be on holiday and answer the phone. Which is actually against the yeah. law? Not quite. Law, law, law would be the wrong word. You have word, to be available all the time. It, the, the law is you have to be available. It's not against mm. the law to go on holiday. It's, it's, um, yeah. It would be found to be negligent as a landlord if you didn't answer the phone at three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. That's absolutely the, the case right now. Yeah. We, as a letting agency, 24-7, 365 days a year, have to be available. And there are councils now, and if there's... Half a dozen councils that I could name today, I would imagine in five, six, seven years, it'll be the majority of councils mm -hmm. that to give you a license, so we're talking in areas that are licensable, you have to have either a letting agent or a certificate to prove that as a landlord you've gone through some training. Sure. Now in Nottingham that's not actually quite the case. You get a discount if you've got the certificate. So you can very you can do it without the certificate, but you have to pay more. But you can see where, the way it's heading and all the questions that um, are on that kind of questionnaire is, you know, are you available? What's your plan for um, managing this, that, that, you know, how do you cope with, have you got this in, sure. yeah, all these things, all these things that are letting agent, of course, that's the business we're in. <clears throat> and what the questions are asking is, are you as a landlord set up to be a property and tenancy manager? Mm -hmm. And the answer is, no, you're not. No. You just don't want to be. You're, you're, you're at work. You're, you're doing whatever it is that you're doing at work. You haven't got time. You haven't got the skill. You haven't got the training. And when it comes to the decision to get it or not, isn't it, why on earth would you want to do that? Yeah. Yeah, that's not, yeah. that's not, that's not the, the training or skill you've got. So, yeah, self-managing versus letting agent. Have a go self-managing if you like. Cut those corners. But I, I think, generally speaking, a letting agency is going to make you more than it could save by not having it. I agree. Yeah. Um, there's two more things I want to talk about mm. um, because I speak with a lot of first timers. Um, furnishing the house or leaving it unfurnished. That's a good one, yeah. It does get so house quite a lot, yeah. We never furnish a house unless it's a, a HMO, mm. house and multiple occupation. Mm. Um, a single let property, a flat or a, uh, actually, no, a flat. We don't do a lot of flats, but probably a, a city centre flat yeah. you might need to. Yeah. But a typical, two, typical family home, you will find the tenants already have their own stuff. Um, if you do furnish it, um, fridges break, yep. washing machines break. So when I talk about furnish, I mean um, yep. household goods as well. Um, we typically don't. Um, I just, I just don't see the point. Well, if you, if, I've got a couple where I need to furnish them. <clears throat> the city centre locations, their flats, transient tenants. It's, stuff, it's yeah. a more transient tenant. Yeah. So um, yeah, I have to. That's that's the standard. That's what's expected to charge that rent for that property in that location. Now. What works better for me, so that, that is a city centre flat, the tenant typically stays there for a year or maybe a year and a half, maybe two, that's the most ever. Mm. Whereas my preferred, our preferred um, property to invest in, let's take the, the three bed um, you know, 1950s terraced house or whatever, um, in a slightly out of town location, the tenant stays there for years, but they, they bring their own furniture. Mm -hmm. If, if you were to say, oh, it comes with a washing machine, then look at yourself, oh, I've already got my washing machine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, take it out, please. You know, so mm. you can see the kind of tenant that attracts, why you don't need to furnish it, um, and why that type of tenant stays there longer. So, yeah, we, we I, I also, it's absolutely true. If you, if you finish it, if it breaks, you've got to replace it. Um, 
do be careful if you do if they, need to, if, the turn if they break it, it, they might not even be, you yeah. might not be yeah. able to prove they did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, also, if you really do need to furnish it or you feel the need for some reason, make sure it's all fire mm. retardant and fireproof and you keep the tags on and mm. all those kind of things. Pat testing. Pat testing and all those yeah. kind of things. So, yeah. if you can avoid it, it, um, it impacts your margin at the end of the year by not having to pay for wear and tear, renewals. Mm. Uh, pat testing and all those kind of things. So we say no, okay. no um, furnishing. Right. Um, one more point to make before we wrap up, and that is um, consider rent and legal insurance. Hmm. So you want to explain what that is? Well, let, let, we can talk about insurance in general because there's a lot of risk and uh, worries that a landlord has got in their heads, and there's none of them that aren't insurable. So yeah. there's obvious ones. So you, you start to think, well, okay, well, if I buy the wrong house and it falls down, you got a survey, and that's insured in mm. a way. Um, it burns <clears throat> to the ground. I've got insurance for that. Yeah. Uh, my boiler breaks, you can get insurance for that. So actually, everything that could be a worry, you can get insurance for. So don't... Um, In including the tenant not paying the rent. Exactly. So yeah. one of the last... When you whittle it down, some of them are obvious. Of course, you're going to have... Mm -hmm. well, of course, you're going to have buildings insurance. If you've got a mortgage, you have to have it. Correct. Yeah. Um, but some of the things that you can insure against that you might not know as a, as a, as a not landlord yet, um, is yeah, you can insure... if. if if you were the big two worries, my tenant won't pay, mm -hmm. my tenant will trash the house. Yep. You can get the trash the house insurance. Yeah, malicious damage. Malicious cover. damage yeah. coming. It's different to contents. But um, yeah, the, the rent and legal means if your tenant doesn't pay, uh, that insurance will pay the rent to you as mm -hmm. if the tenant had, and also pay to uh, the, legal, the fees legal fees to get your tenant out. Rent and it'll expensive. pay the void after that correct before you move the new tenant in check your policy but yeah. uh, you've got the right policy would yeah. yeah um they're not the high street um kind of lenders no. that's worth noting now you you can get rent and legal policies from most high street big name branded um insurers but we know the best ones are probably people you've never heard of but they're letting specific and they cover everything yeah, end to end. Whereas mm. the high street stuff seems to, it won't do the void afterwards. It won't do, um, uh, you know, there's a limit on the amount of money they'll do on mm. the legal stuff and they won't do fast track. Or, you know, there's all sorts of small print that doesn't work quite as much mm. Just as well. Just one other thing. Um, mm. If your paperwork isn't perfect, oh, then the, the, the they, they, they'll either won't give you it or they'll really, they won't pay out. So, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we, we hear it all the time. Um, oh, we don't like that insurance, it never pays out. Yeah. You did something wrong. It always, always pays out. If, if, you, if you've got your paperwork in order and you've, you've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's, it pays out, simple yeah. as that. If it doesn't, you've done something procedurally wrong and that takes us all the way up to the top of the list here, which is you've got to do things right. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Cool. That's it for today. That's the end. Hopefully that helps. If you want to become a landlord, um, we're a letting agent, we're also the UK's number one property sourcer, so if you've watched a video to the end, how to become a landlord, maybe we could help you out. Adam's got a sourcing team. Mm -hmm. Is there a clicker, clicker button? Talk There's to us. There's a link in the comments. Um, yeah. Follow that. Lauren's behind the camera me. saying, yeah, there is. Yeah. Good. You know where to find the links. If you want to start the customer journey, click the blue button and yeah. you'll you some, all of a sudden my diary. You'll yeah. be on a Zoom call or a telephone call with Adam or his team. Um, That's it. If you've uh, liked this, there'll be Whatever platform you're on, there'll be thumbs and bells and whatnot, so click them. That helps us. Thank you. And if you want to keep it coming, subscribe to your favourite platform to keep the latest episodes coming. Feel free to get in touch with any ideas Ooh, yeah, or that's topics you want us to talk about in the future. If you can find it, we've added the Ask a Question button. I don't know where it is. You have to find that one. <laughs> Brilliant. Find it. Okay. <laughs> find it. And if you've got a, a topic or an idea for the next podcast video, then uh, yeah, get in touch that way. Bye for cool. now. Cheers.